all welcome back to another video welcome back to another <sighs> hashtag advice with cat now with this one there's a lot of difficult questions there's a lot of questions but i i promised y'all i promised myself i promised you guys that i would do this recording and I'm here for it. I'm here for Big Sister Vibes. I'm here to advise. I'm here for us to learn from one another. I'm here for us to learn something from each other. And I'm so, so excited to have you guys here. It's a new video. Are you subscribed to the channel? And if you're not, why not? Please subscribe so we can get started. Thank you. Okay, so as you guys know, you guys know how it works with the hashtag advice with cat videos. You guys send through your questions and I put some up on the community tab and I'm also going to read some questions off of the previous advice with cat video and we're going to get into it. I'm going to advise as I can. Again, I have to mention a disclaimer that I am not a professional and I would always, always recommend that you consult a professional, especially if it is a serious, serious situation that might involve mental health anything that might involve how you feel physically anything like that I always always highly recommend that you consult with a professional but am I here to give you my two cents absolutely do I want to give you my two cents absolutely let's get into the video let's get into your questions okay all right so I'm gonna start with the questions that I put up on my community tab and we're gonna go that way. Then we're going to look at the questions that are in the previous Advice with Cat video. So we've got the newest first. Um, Kanyisila says, I just turned 30 and I still feel clueless when it comes to some important life things, teaching and advising myself through all of it. So that video will be appreciated. I don't know if it can be a video, I feel like I try to incorporate things like life, you know, what I've learned being here, being where I'm at, what I've learned about life at the age that I'm at, what I've learned about relationships, marriages. Um, so this is a very open-ended question that can have so many answers to it and that could take us all day. So can you see if you could do me a favor and actually centralize your question a little bit more so that you can ask me something that's more direct, that would help me so much more because, or else baby girl child, we would be here all day trying to figure out what life is about and what the teachings that come with life are and all of that. So this one says, hi cat, how do you pick yourself up when you're in a rut spiritually and feeling distant from God? This is really, really a great question because even with me this year, I've been really feeling spiritually distant from God. And one of the biggest things without getting too much into religion or too much into things that tend to make some people uncomfortable, the only thing that I can possibly say is just try to pray. Even if it's like a minute prayer every day, even if you're praying when you're in the shower, even if you're praying while you're driving to work or headed to school or, or, or in public transportation to school, whatever it is, even when you're making your food and you're cooking, just talk to God. Even if I don't want to say uh, pray, just talk to God in your, in your mind and in your heart and in your spirit and be intentional about what you want to share with him. Because praying, of course, involves a lot of, you know, certain prayers that we pray each and every single day. It involves opening the Bible. It involves, that is a true connection to your faith and to God. But when you're in a rut, I feel like maybe approach it from a place where you're just having a conversation with God, you know? There's a book called Conversations with God. I don't remember who it's from, but there's definitely a book called Conversations with God. And I feel like maybe it would be a great way to start in that way, where you just have a conversation with God, where you're just like, you know what? Father God, yeah, I know me and you, our friendship has been strained a little bit. And just start talking to God, whether you're talking to him cooking, cleaning your house, it doesn't matter. I feel like, um, so I just brought my hair over to one side because it's actually really annoying <laughs> at this point. I feel like talking to God and making it a conversation as if you'd be having a conversation with a friend is always a great way to start in terms of communicating with the creator and communicating with your spiritual higher power. It doesn't matter if it's God, it doesn't matter whether it is a, a guru or a shaman or whatever it is. If 
if you want to find some sort of connection to your spirituality just connect through talking and i feel like telling yourself that you know it's not hard um, communicating with a friend you're talking to somebody who is a friend to you makes it so much more easier as opposed to um, feeling like oh my god you're talking to the Alpha and Omega you need to come at God a certain way you can't just you know you need to come correct when you're talking to God of course you must of course you must but also I feel like it's really really important to just allow yourself to communicate with God without putting so much pressure on yourself I hope that helps because I'm also struggling with that quite a lot if there's somebody who can maybe uh, comment and give us some tips that would be highly appreciated in the comments down below how do I stretch my income to ensure that I get the most out of my money? Okay, let's start with this. How can I grow in an organization? One, I think people need to also understand that growing in an organization takes time. Growing in an organization doesn't necessarily mean you're going to grow now, now fast. That's why there's things like KPIs and things like performance reviews and things like that. These are things that are structurally in place to see how well you are doing or what needs improving on so that you can grow. You can't just automatically think, oh, well, I've been at this organization four months and now I feel like I deserve to be in a senior position with a different kind of tax bracket and all of that. It doesn't necessarily work that way. I feel like what you can do in this instance is put yourself intentionally into your work. Focus on wanting to know more. Be a sponge. Absorb as much as you can. You know how kids absorb everything? Kids absorb everything. Absorb. I can never say absorb. 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 Kids absorb everything. And I feel like you also need to approach being in an organization the very same way. You need to absorb everything like a sponge. Whatever your seniors are teaching you, take it and run with it. And actually show them that what they are saying to you is actually noticed and you're paying attention to what they're saying to you as opposed to just them trying to show you something and then you learn it in the moment and then you don't ex execute it or exercise it ever again then you're not going to grow in that organization but teach yourself more about the organization that you're working for and not only teaching yourself more but also um intentionally and willingly bring yourself into your work because a lot of people find themselves stuck in positions where you just you know what nine to five i'm going to work i'm getting a salary that's all that matters i'm good i don't have to worry about anything else and that's not necessarily how it works in truth i don't want to lie to you that's not necessarily how it works you have to if you want to grow you have to put in the effort and that might just have to start with listening absorbing taking in as much as you can and then exercising it so that you prove to your seniors and also your peers that you're there to grow you're not there to play or to just get a salad because then it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way um how can what can i do to stretch my income to ensure that i get the most out of my money save your income try not to use your income or your money frivolously if there's one thing that our society does quite a lot, we spend, even me, I was guilty on this. I spent so much of my income on fru the blasting child. I spent so much of my income on just frivolous purchases or trips that really weren't necessary at the time. Really sit down, create a budget, see what it is that you need what you want and what the wants i mean everybody deserves to want what they want especially when you're working hard for your money and you're waking up each and every single day to go to your job that probably pisses you off so much but you can reward yourself reward yourself but at the same time be financially sound when it comes to your money if it's not necessary don't do it if you get to a mall and you see this really nice cute cup and you're thinking to yourself "Ooh, i want this but you know that you've got 15 cups at home don't buy it don't buy it if you don't but if it's part of the once budget of your of your <clears throat> of your uh, budget every month if it's part of the once section of your budget every month then it's fine if you can include it there it's fine but if now you're dipping dipping into notice deposits and you're dipping into this so that you can go on a trip or buy yourself clothes or do this this then then you are not you're not stretching out your income stretching out your income especially in societies like today means learning to put money away as much as it's difficult and if you can't 
If you're not in a position where you can, that's understandable too because people's salaries have been cut, people have lost their jobs, you're trying to make ends meet, but also at the same time, you're trying to put food on the table, you're trying to keep lights in the house, you're trying to do all of that. It's fine and it's understandable, but if you do have money in which that is disposable to you, try by all means not to use it frivolously. That's how you can stretch your income. How or where do I make friends as an adult? Online. Online, sweetie. Online. Online, sweetie. I mean, it's easy enough for me to say you can go out and have a good time and, and, and meet people that way. But sometimes you can go out with your friends and not have met anyone new by the end of the night. You just hung out with your friend and that was that on that on that. But honestly, online. Engage with people, communicate with people. If somebody tweets something you like, respond to the tweet, what, what. You never know at the end of the day what kind of friendship you can build with that person. But you have to um, engage, you have to bring yourself forward to wanting to meet new people. And wanting to meet new people means getting out of your comfort zone. Especially if you're going to, if you're an introvert like myself and it's really, really difficult to meet new people and all of that, you have to get, ooh, this top chair. You have to get into a certain comfort zone. You have to get out of a certain comfort zone or else you're gonna struggle to meet new people. But you can go out, do lunches with friends, go to a bar on a Friday night, have a drink with your friend, don't waste the money, but have a drink with your friend or um, just be out and about. But the easiest way which you can do it from the comfort of your home is here. Social media, you can do it, you know, uh, uh, liking people's posts, commenting on people's posts, you never know. Next thing you know, a few months later, you've developed a, a friendship with somebody who you just used to respond to their tweets. Then, I've been dating the father of my child for almost 12 years now. We started dating in our early 20s and uh, we, we didn't even know what we wanted, but we kept it going. I don't see a future with him because there are lots of inconsistencies, but the guilt is bigger than anything else. What should I do? I feel so lost. That is hard. That is hard because you're 12 years in at this point. Um, and I would never ever advise for you to walk away or for you to stay or whatever. The only thing that I could advise is to talk to your person about exactly how you feel. The video I was commuting. The video I was filming before this one, I touched on communication quite a bit. And I genuinely feel like communicating with your partner about things like this, things that truly make you feel a certain way, things that truly make you feel they eat at you and the guilt eats at you and all of that really needs sitting down and having a truthful and honest conversation with your partner. Walking away doesn't necessarily mean that you'll have a better relationship or a better future with someone else it doesn't necessarily mean that you can walk away if you feel like you can't do it anymore but i would never advise you to walk away i would rather say sit down have an open frank true conversation with your partner about how you feel and then ask him how he feels about the relationship and what he thinks you guys could do to make it better if it's salvageable and all of that do not just immediately pack and walk out because there's definitely something that kept you there for the, for the past 12 years. Definitely something there. So there is love there. There's not only a child there as well, but there's love there as well. So all you need to do is communicate and talk to your partner about that kind of stuff so that you know that, you know what, we have a healthy communicative relationship where we can talk to each other even when we do not feel grand about each other or about the relationship. Just Thank you for being an older sister to me. Your videos really calm me down. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hi, Oskatlao. My story is quite long, but it's about life choices that I made. I completed my matric in 2016 and worked at a preschool in 2017. Then I went to go study at UJ in 2018, and I did well in the first year. In the second year, things started to really fall apart, suicide attempts, in illnesses, uh, boy, boys, etc. As a result, I performed really poorly and I was excluded from the institution. I appealed and it was successful because I managed to continue studying and got funding again. I got distracted again because the situation at home was not okay. I got a job at a salon, started working and that didn't help improve my studies any further. Now the faculty of education won't readmit me. I have to start a new course over with no funding. I'm struggling to really forgive myself and I'm so sad. Listen, you've had it hard. 
okay for the mere fact that you didn't you went to uj you did well but in the second year there were suicide attempts illnesses operations this is serious stuff and the second time around there was issues at home this is serious stuff you need to be able to forgive yourself you need to be able to forgive yourself and let that stuff go because some of those things were things that are beyond your control illnesses are beyond your control suicide attempts are beyond your control and again i'm so sorry to hear this because this is difficult you've had a really 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 difficult life but you kept on pursuing and persevering to want to get your education and that's okay the fact is you are still here you do want to still get your education. Now, the trick is also getting funding, but there are so many ways, so many ways in which you can get funding. Please hit me up and DM me so that we can talk about this in more detail so I can see that what you want to study and maybe try and help find out for you what bursaries or anything that there is that, that can potentially help. The point of what I'm saying is you didn't give up. You need to learn to forgive yourself for what life threw at you then, right? Life threw it at you, but you were strong enough to keep going. And that is something you need to uh, not only congratulate yourself for, because there's many other people who probably would have just decided, you know what, I don't want to go back to school. I'll just work. I'll just do this. But you still want to do it. So forgive yourself. Let it go. That was then and this is now. And if you are in a better position mentally now, and I really hope that you seek some sort of professional counsel and advice and professional treatment with all the struggles that you have been through. And I really also hope that the situation at home is even better. But now the work is with you. The work is here internally in yourself that you need to forgive yourself for what life threw at you. It had nothing to do with you. It's what life said is going to happen. It was the course that your life was going to take. That had nothing to do with... Some of them had to do with the decisions you made, like the boys one, sure. But illnesses and operations and family situations at home, these are things that are a lot of the time beyond our control. So you need to just forgive yourself for that and know that it was not your fault. Forgive yourself, let it go. And that seeing, seeking counsel and speaking to somebody about it who's professionally trained for it will be able to, to show you this in such a way that they will open it up in your brain through science, through what they tell you. Because there's nothing that I could ever possibly tell you that is gonna switch your mental up immediately after what I've just said now. So all I can say is seek counsel and speak to somebody about it but don't give up. But it doesn't mean your life is over. You can still switch things around. You can still change things around. And I'm looking forward to seeing how you do that. I really am looking forward to seeing how you do that. But you can do it. But just start by forgiving yourself. You had no control over half, 90% of the things that happened here. You had no control over them. Any ideas on sexual hygiene as well as feminine hygiene? Your take on Yoni products versus the alternative of clinical prescriptions to treat feminine related health problems. Sexual hygiene and feminine hygiene. Feminine hygiene, I have a uh, video on, on my channel where I talk about feminine hygiene, but essentially is very simple, this thing. Take care of your, you know what? You know how we talk about all the time, hey, hey, this thing down here, our little petunia downstairs, and we talk about how, you know, hygiene, how we can practice good hygiene, water. Is your best friend I'm not even I am not even for a lie I'm not a doctor but I know that a doctor will tell you because my doctor also told me water is your best friend okay and some people are against things like intimate washes and uh, using bar soaps and all of that some people will tell you to use other different kinds of things it's all on you but the whole thing is water wash your body shaving that's just that's just feminine hygiene and if it's something that you could do some some uh women actually also feel like shaving is just not even a thing anymore you know and they don't shave their pits and they don't shave their and it's all on you it's all your choice what you want to do with your body and how you want to bring hygiene into your life and into your body and all of that so feminine hygiene i would highly suggest that you watch um the video that i have on my channel because it's it literally 
talks about some of my favorite feminine hygiene products and all of that. Um, but truly, it's just looking after yourself. <laughs> things like Yoni products and things like pineapple juice and things like, I don't... I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm not about that. Much like there are people who don't subscribe to intimate washes, I don't have a problem with intimate washes, but there are people who just don't get on with intimate washes and they'll tell you, don't do that. It messes up with the pH. I've never had a problem with intimate washes my whole entire life. My hoo-ha petunia is fine, child, okay? The only reason why I suggest um, shaving because shaving hair keeps in dirt, dust, uh, stones, tissues, any form of residue, and it just, it's not, it's not good. You need to try and keep that area as clean as possible and hair trap stuff. So I highly suggest shaving down there more, especially. I'm, I'm, I'm the shaving kind, okay? Maybe there are people here who don't believe in shaving and believe in having your secret garden. Fine. If you want to have your secret garden and you want to have that Amazon, hey amen, it'd be like that sometimes. That's your choice. But I just feel like there's certain things that I do, which is drinking a lot of water and looking after myself by shaving and using intimate washes, that helps me. Sure. Hygiene. So for me, one of the biggest things that my doctor taught me when it comes to sexual hygiene that I can, I can say, especially if you're a female today, after every sexual encounter, after every round, after every single round that you have, you can have four rounds in that night with your partner. Go take a pee. After round one, go pee. After round two, go pee. After round three, go pee. Four, pee. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? My doctor taught me that peeing is good because it's just, it flushes things out. It's one of the reasons why I used to get a lot of UTIs. And the first question my doctor would always ask me was, do you pee after sex? Do you actually pee? And I was just like, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, sometimes, I mean, I guess. So my biggest suggestion is go pee. Immediately after you have a sexual encounter or a round, go pee. That's one thing that I can highly advise after, like in terms of sexual hygiene. Everything else, using condoms, not using condoms, that's preferential. If you want me to do a, a full dedicated video to sexual hygiene, let me know. I really don't mind doing that, actually. <laughs> I really don't mind doing that. But the one thing that I would highly advise when it comes to sexual hygiene, pee after sex. Hi, Kat. This is a loaded question. I'm going through a phase where I'm constantly sleeping. I don't want to wake up early because there's nothing to look forward to. I feel that it's useless to wake up early and not do anything. I'm waiting for my results in order to graduate. Uh -huh. That alone gives me anxiety. What can I do in order to motivate myself uh, to wake up? What things can I do to keep me from sleeping during the day? I've tried reading. That alone puts me to sleep. I would like you to consult your doctor. There's something that I would say, but I don't want to say it. I really don't want to say it because I don't want to come across as if I'm diagnosing you with something or I'm saying whatever, it's not my place. I would like you to consult a doctor because sleeping all day and not having uh, the list to do anything but sleep is a clear symptom or sign of something. But I really feel like you need to consult your doctor about this. If you don't think it's anything other than that, maybe you just feel like you're anxious about your results and you don't want to do anything because you just want your results to come out and all of that. I hear that chat as well. But I would like to recommend that you do see a doctor because maybe you are struggling with anxiety. Maybe you are struggling with something else. But... Um, Wanting and feeling the list to sleep all day is not the healthiest thing. Something is not right. I can tell you that now. I can't motivate you to get up or say do this or whatever because you're just not going to do it. You're going to want to sleep. If this is what you're saying, you're going to want to, want to sleep even more. So I really do highly recommend that you consult a doctor about why you're sleeping all day. Okay? And they will ask you. The right questions they will speak to you and say the right things to you okay
I think um, that's that's about it for this uh, edition of the advice with cat video i hope you guys enjoyed this one this one was difficult there were really uh, a bunch of hard questions in this one i would really also like you guys to add some easier questions because i am not a psychologist i am not a counselor i am not anybody who can advise you especially on things that might involve mental health issues so sometimes just keep it light keep it fun keep it flirty let's talk about relationships friendships whatever because it kind of gets hard for me to constantly, it puts me also in a mental funk to constantly answer questions that are really this difficult to answer and just really difficult to digest even for myself. So please, let's also try to remember to keep it light. It is advice with cat. It's not candid with cat, but it's advice with cat. And sometimes let's, let's just talk relationships, friendships, life, love, laughter, anything. Um, yeah, it gets a little bit hard when I'm constantly having to answer questions that involve mental health issues because that also, um, I don't want it to get to a point where it also triggers me and triggers my mood as well. But I do appreciate all your questions. Now that you see this video, please comment down below. You've got a situation, you've got a sistoli situation that you want me to answer for you, blah, blah, blah. Comment down below. And if you don't want to comment down below, you want to keep it anonymous, hit me up on Instagram and talk to me on there. That's pretty much it. I hope you guys have subscribed to the channel and that you've clicked the notification bell because if you haven't, why not? And uh, I'll see you in the next video. We're on the road to 30K. So, so, so excited. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Be kind to your heart. Be kind to your mind. And everything else will fall into place. I'll see you soon. Mwah!